What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Cooped Up Podcast, a podcast that probably should get a haircut before Baltimore this weekend, but by the time you're watching this, the Baltimore Regionals will be over, so I'm congratulating myself for winning the Baltimore Regionals. Oh. You guys are welcome. There you the go. Lug- the, the play was Lugia all along, and I'm going to oh. look back on this. Uh, I'm going to insert a clip of me uh, live on the scene uh, with my record of how I did uh, coming out right now. That's a note for future uh, Koopa for later. But <laughs> as always, guys, my name is Koopa. I am your host here on the Koopa Podcast, where each week we sit down with the guests and we talk about all the happenings of pop culture and everything in between. And this week, folks, uh, we're joined two episodes in a row by new guests. By the time this episode comes out, the episode with Jeremy will have already came out. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Jalen for joining us. And uh, we're joined once again by a commentator in the Pokemon Pantheon, this time of Pokemon <laughs> Unite coming from us from undisclosed location. Uh, it's uh, my good friend Zoinks. Zoinks, good evening. I, how, how you doing? I'm doing good. I can disclose my location if you need. Uh, <laughs> I can absolutely <laughs> do that. Uh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm really excited to be on the podcast. Following up Jeremy is a really tall task. I absolutely love Jeremy Gel, and he's got a lot of really fun and interesting things to say. So I, a little, you know nervous i guess but i'm excited to be on the show also uh lugia being the call for baltimore i don't know if i agree (laughs) um i think i think there's some other play we'll we'll talk hey man i don't think it's the play either but it's you know it's like it's it might be uh, (laughs) i've always described my relationship with lugia for those not inclined to pokemon stuff you know it's a it's fun uh listen to my other podcast where i talk that nauseam about it but um (laughs) i uh i've always described my relationship with lugia as like if you're familiar with edit and eddie and mm-hmm. how like Double D knows how to play the steel guitar, but he absolutely loathes it. Yes. But he's really good at playing the steel guitar. That's me with Lugia. Like, okay, I, I I hate that I'm so comfortable playing a deck that causes me great anguish and pain. But <laughs> I'm kind of doing I'm doing but doing a lot of testing last month or so. Uh, and like I've been <laughs> everything kind of feels like uh, crap right now in this format. And Lugia is kind of looking at me like the Green Goblin mask right now. It's just <laughs> like, mm, come on, come on over here, buddy. But uh, they we'll always come happens. back. They always, always come gonna, back to the bird. Yeah, always an excuse <laughs> to bring this guy with me. So oh. he is a uh, yeah. I love this guy. <laughs> I I am like a. I've played Pokemon cards for a really long time, like well over ten years now or whatever. It's actually my introduction to competitive Pokemon was the TCG. But um, I I don't really play standard much anymore. I am a diehard GLC head. I, mm. I love playing GLC, and I praised the Sun, which is Andrew Mahone, when <laughs> when Archeops got banned. I was like, thank God. I am so, and then now Colorless is still one of the best decks in the format, but that's okay as long as Archeops is gone. I'm, I'm yeah. feeling good. <laughs> this guy is adorable as he is. He's a, he's a cop, so we're yeah. just gonna you know yeah you oh, you he, I didn't know I could hate him worse. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah uh. he's he's very much an op, but I love him. It's uh. I I told I told this funny story and I'll tell it again. This is so funny on the podcast. Um, that I bought that Archeops plushie at the first regional I ever went to, which was in Hartford, Connecticut, about mm-hmm. a year or so ago. And you know I was playing Lugia to the event, so I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll bring you know I'll bring Archeops with me. puts it puts the table buddy on the table. And the guy I'm sitting down to in my round three is like, oh, are you playing Lugia? And I'm just like, nah, absolutely not. What are you, crazy? And then I flip over Lugia, and the guy's like, I thought you said you weren't playing Lugia. I'm like, yeah, I lied. <laughs> like, like, you're like generally upset. I'm just Archeops like, why you United Wings? Get set. It's time. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Don't tempt me with a good time. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> see, yeah, I'm we'll, uh, discovering text. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see how that all plays out uh, by the time this podcast comes out. I will either have won the tournament or I it's a 3 drop and we're playing side events all weekend. But, okay. Uh, Bit of a Ricky Bobby uh, paradigm going into this event. <laughs> yeah. You're not first, yeah. you are 0-3 drop. Good to yeah. know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm driving, so I get to dictate when we all go home. Ah, so. <laughs> nice. I like ultimatums. Very good. Yeah, those are the rules of the, of the Koopa carpool. But uh, Zoinx, <laughs> I'll start by asking you, how was your, how was your Monday? How was, uh, how was everything happening on your side of the world so uh, not too bad not too bad we were discussing a little bit off air my real person job is that i'm a, I'm a locksmith uh and i work uh and it's it's fun i enjoyed the job quite a bit today was a pretty chill day which is nice on a monday you know like get back into the work week a little bit just had a couple of jobs and an estimate it was pretty easy so yeah i i started the week vibes actually going pretty well weather's starting to turn i i'm from chicago and the weather's starting to turn pretty nice fall flavor a little bit so i'm a fan 
Yeah, listen, first of all, shout out to esports commentators with jobs. There's not enough of us. The best. <laughs> we, uh, shout, you know, to those uh, hardworking heroes that punch in for <laughs> nine to five. Yeah. Uh, and if you're like us, that's people like still going to an office and on site for stuff, you know. Yeah. God bless you. But uh, I think Pokemon and Smash were actually pretty frequent. Like, I think yeah. the, the majority <laughs> of commentators in our two titles are primarily <laughs> working a full time and also <laughs> doing commentary. Yeah. I have business cards, so okay. It, 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 it For is, it both? Is. No, not you know what? I've been putting off. Getting, there's so many things I put off in terms of esports that could have like accelerated my like mm -hmm. path a little bit quicker. Like I could have been streaming a lot sooner. I could have gotten paid yeah. myself an LLC a lot sooner. Like we were talking about off air. Oh yeah, I could have got myself business <laughs> cards a lot sooner. But like most things in life, I am incredibly lazy. <laughs> I am ah. just doing this. Uh, <laughs> you know the uh, the good old fashioned blue collar way, just by showing up. <laughs> there you go. Hey. As long as it pays the bills, I mean, maybe we're coping, but that, I I am totally aligned with you. There's probably so many other things I could be doing. Um, but yeah, I am. I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now. How about, how about you, Koopa? How was your week? Things are going good. Yeah, it's been a Monday so far. Uh, okay. Mondays at my job are usually not that bad. Um, mm -hmm. But I had a pretty productive weekend. And again, just kind of prepping for a, a shorter week because I'm going on a trip this week. But, uh, oh, you know, Baltimore. hence is, yep, that's hence is, I <laughs> gotta love the, having that most East Coast regional be in Maryland this season. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they are very absent from the East Coast. I don't know what it is with Pokemon and East Coast. It feels like a win-win, too. You get some European travelers to come compete in some of those events as well. It's kind of bizarre to me. You know what's crazy? Like, I started playing Pokemon, like, back in, I think it's it'll be about two years in, like, November, December. I've mm -hmm. only, I've only very much still new to, like, Pokemon as a, as a, as a construct competitively. Yeah. And I started playing, like, right after they had regionals in Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Okay. Which is not too far from where I currently live. Ah. So I, so I really picked, like, you know, I kind of came into the thing, whole, you know, a little late where it's like, dang, like, I could have <laughs> had a regional 15 minutes from my house. Like, oh. I will never be that fortunate ever again. <laughs> yeah. That's the dream. I When I started competing, when I first moved to Chicago, this was before regionals and international championships were existed. It was city championships and like, oh, what was it after that? I think just nationals. But anyway, yeah. the, I, I competed in a couple of Chicago city championships and things like that. But I don't know. In the last few years, I don't know where the decisions have been going. But now Peoria is the closest <laughs> one, which I know sucks for everybody else a lot more than me. But it kind of <laughs> sucks for me, too. I don't know. It's not good for anybody. <laughs> yeah, sh uh, shout outs to uh, to the guys on the Shift Gear podcast. Whenever they do a tier list, they uh, and something stinks, they banish it to Peoria tier. So. Oh no, <laughs> the slander oh. is the slander is unreal. But from what I heard, it's a yeah. it's a it's a beautiful city. So uh, sure, with all four people <laughs> living in it, it's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we love to see it. But uh, y yeah, you know, uh, again, we're a couple of Pokemon heads. I'm curious. So like now that you know you've you've expressed your 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 history a little bit with pokemon for those uninclined yeah. um you know what's how uh what, what's what's your, what's your journey as a as an esports broadcaster a little bit just to kind of lift the curtain sure. up so how, how, how do we get how do, how do we get to where we are now yeah so commentary um it didn't start until pretty late i guess uh, or like recently i suppose is a better way to say it um in college i was in college in like 2014 to 2016 kind of kind of era i um I, I had done a little bit of theater stuff, uh, but one thing that I really latched onto, it's kind of been a through line through most of my life. If I like doing something, I usually like watching the best people in the world at that thing. So I played a lot of sports in high school, and so I was a big into the like the NBA, uh, the NHL, like watching sports that I played and enjoyed. Um, but then when I got to college, I stopped playing more sports, did more theater stuff, and I started playing video games, like really hardcore for the first time. I, growing up, I played some, but I had pretty strict parents and stipulations on that kind of stuff yeah. so i didn't play as much but when i got to college i started playing a ton i got really into overwatch was the first one that i started like sinking my teeth into and i went i found out that overwatch esports was a thing got introduced to it as a whole and like went all in like started just i watched beta tournaments like i was watching every <laughs> single weekly evening tournament i had so much fun um I got involved in that scene a little bit more. Uh, there's a few podcasts that I really enjoyed. I ended up making, well, not making, I ended up taking over 
a fantasy Overwatch League podcast once upon a time. <laughs> like I got like I got so deep, Koopa. I can't describe how deep I got into Overwatch esports. And I, I still love it. But um that was like my introduction there. And I remember like looking up to a lot of the commentators at that time. And Overwatch spun into a few more games. Smash was definitely a huge one. I remember looking up to so many Smash commentators, yourself legitimately included. Um I remember <laughs> in the you. original crew was like uh, it was like TK, you, um, Aussie was like a big inspiration for a lot of the time back then. Vicky, um, it was just like a lot of people that I was like, has, of course. I was like, these people, I know them and they're really good. Uh, it was like Smash, Overwatch, and things like that. I just really liked it. Um, but I never really got a chance to do it. I commentated like two Smash events at my college, but like, <laughs> it wasn't even streamed. It was like to an audience, but our mics weren't even, it was fine, you know? <laughs> but like, oh, I, yeah. so I tried that and, but I had so much fun doing it. I tried to do a bit of Overwatch stuff, but at this point I'd moved away from college and it was just, it was too remote. I just wasn't working. Um, but when Pokemon Unite got announced... I was really excited. I loved Pokemon at this point. I was following like every title in depth except Go wasn't added to the competitive circuit at this point, but I was following TCG and VG at the regional level, watching the broadcast. I was really enjoying it. Um, and I messaged uh, a friend of mine, Dupe Snacks, who's a commentator uh, for Pokemon Unite. I knew he used to commentate Pokemon trading card game. And I was like, hey, we had played a few games when Unite had come out. Like, when it, in, actually, before it had come out, in like the Canadian beta, <laughs> we messed around <laughs> a little bit with the game. And then I reached out to him at one point. Like, uh, it was like the first patch of the game. And I was like, hey, they're adding a spectator mode. When do you want to like mess around and do some commentary of this thing? And he responded back, he's like, are you serious? And I said, I am? And then he sent me a message, he's like, I'm actually doing something. <laughs> and he had basically a plan to make a YouTube channel called Unite Mics. He already had like a logo and branding and everything. And he was like, I want our channel to be just a bunch of commentary, like basically a portfolio for me and others in our group as commentators. So that whenever they start looking for people to run tournaments, it'll basically be like a giant YouTube channel of a resume of like casting and commentary uh and so i was like yeah dope that sounds so much fun i got into it uh we started the group of four of us it ended up just being two of us dupe snacks and i um he got picked up for the first couple of tournaments i got picked up midway through the first season um and we just started doing it so like realistically pokemon unite was my first ever actual esports commentary um again i have dabbled but that is like in the lightest <laughs> sense of the word in other ones but i I've had so much fun. I have a background in like improv comedy and stuff too, and a just a fuck ton of Dungeons and Dragons and role playing <laughs> games um, that have definitely helped with like preparing me for something like this. But uh, yeah, it's been kind of all in towards one title for the last couple of years now. If there's anything you guys can gather from this podcast, is that being a theater kid is the pipeline to becoming an esports. <laughs> and I like wasn't even a theater kid, like not until like college, right? But like I I started and I was like, I you mean I don't have to practice every single day and go to tournaments every weekend? I can just go have fun with my friends. Yeah. That sounds way better. <laughs> and so I pivoted hard in college, but I uh, no regrets there whatsoever. <laughs> I'm very happy with my decisions. No, listen, that's all really interesting stuff. Um, again, first of all, I got to give a shout out to the, the, the great. Uh, and first of all, I'll say thank you. you know, I appreciate that. You know, that uh, I, I, I could be so influential in, in your process here. Oh, and I, gotta give a I love your side. I actually, when I think of like other like Smash commentators, like I do think that you and I have a pretty similar commentary style with the way, like, way we approach our games and stuff. Um, you're definitely way funnier than I am on oh, <laughs> broadcast. So that's something I envy. But. Um, <laughs> But you, uh, yeah, you do a really good job. So I, I, I've tried to, I try to not like emulate other commentators on broadcast because I actually find it makes me a pretty weak caster when I do it. I, sure. I talk to do things. I think I've talked about this on a podcast before, but whenever I like leave a show. And I'm like, that didn't do a very good job there. Like, I could just tell my cast wasn't as good as it could have been. The first thing that always comes to mind, and it's usually true, is like, well, you were trying to be a dupe snacks in that kind of play. Or you were trying, like, a Spraggles gag, like, during, like, that moment or something. And, like, I can just, like, think through. I'm like, yeah, I was like, any commentators out there, find your own voice. Like, that is, like, the most important part of, like, becoming a, a commentator. Anyway, sorry, insane tangent. You were talking. <laughs> Please no, continue. Listen, that, that, this, look, this is all, again, great stuff. You know, I, I, I think being in the same field with a lot of commentators, ironically enough, I haven't done a lot of talk with, you know, podcasts 
about the commentary side of things. This is all really interesting okay. stuff. And a bit of a takeover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're here for you know we're here to take your the podcasting space now. But <laughs> no, listen, and that's all really good advice to have. You know, I think finding your own voice, finding your own style, finding what works for you is really important because like mm-hmm. commentary, like most entertainment mediums, which is why and another reason why I like posting the show is that everybody has different tastes. Everybody has different preferences. Mm-hmm. You know, That's like true. some, you know, I know what I'm strong at as, as a commentator. Um, and I know where I'm weak at. So that's where I rely on other people that I work with to cover that and Mm -hmm. you mentioned something that i also did um a lot of in college and you know in my younger days (laughs) i say Mm -hmm. that as i'm as as if i'm ancient i just turned 30 so i'm not that old yet but in (laughs) esports years i mean but in esports years i'm basically in a retirement yeah i'm like a year behind you maximum too so yeah i'm right (laughs) a lot yeah see yeah (laughs) see you at the uh, senior discount breakfast Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) yeah yeah, but (laughs) but um (laughs) i took a lot of improv uh classes in college as well sick um i loved i've always had a passion for for comedy, uh, you mm-hmm. know, stand up and, and and improv. So that's something that you know is something I I rec- I uh, I actually got a recommendation from by reading a Tafelkin's tweet. You know, one of my goats. Okay, uh, sick. He, he, yeah. yeah, he he is one of my uh, my commentary goats. I love that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, "It's like, hey, listen, if you're interested in like improving your game as a commentator, yep. you know, being t- taking improv classes is a great way to do that because mm-hmm. you have to you know really adapt on the fly. Uh, you have to be uh, very I say viscous, you know, in in your approach and your style, things can are, are ever changing. You know, the ebbs and flow mm-hmm. of a cast are, are very difficult. Um, and I and I oh I owe a lot. It, it's really hard to be funny, and I mean that in like the nicest way possible. Yeah, people no. like, like I you know I've been with you know I've commentated with uh, with people where it's just like you know I I really appreciate that they're, that they're trying, but like mm-hmm. it's not something that's like it's. It's a lot harder than it looks. Um, oh, for sure. On a, so, in commentary, it's so yeah. much harder too than just like performing on a set or a stage. Like it, yeah. you know, an improv scene is kind of nothing to work with, but in a game, you're trying to. Oh, it's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts in that. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing I learned out of improv when it comes to to commentary, and I'm actually really curious what your thoughts are on this, Koopa, because you have a very similar background. We're finding out, uh, to to esports commentary, things like that. But the number one piece of advice I tell people. Like if they are interested in this like pathway or whatever, I'm like <laughs> on a macro level, there's a bunch of stuff you can say, but on a micro level, like one of the most important things to hold fast to is just please, for the love of God, listen to your co-caster. <laughs> just please <laughs> stop holding this thought you have that happened two minutes ago and like just waiting till the other person stops talking so that you can say it. Like one of the most important things is like listen, respond the more conversational it feels like even if it's an exciting level of conversational like that is just 20 times better that, then i learned that from improv right like you are not funny if you are not listening to your other like other performers yes. and you're just waiting to throw out your gag right like it, everyone just groans <laughs> and you know what's happening and it's just it sucks so yeah that is like number one thing i learned but i'm, I'm curious about you like what is your i guess i'm actually also asking you <laughs> what's a piece of advice for for commentary from from you that you you've done this for quite a while as well Oh man, yeah. I, well, that's a good piece of advice for sure. Like listening, and uh, I, I think the the art of yes and is very, very important. It's mm-hmm. something they teach you a lot in comedy, and I think that's also very important uh, in, yeah. in 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 smash in in esports commentary in general. You know that you can translate that. You know, never, uh, you know, keep the conversation going. Like try to you know set each other up for success. Like yeah, you said you, you know you want you you want to pay attention to the cues like that, but also something that that uh, helped me a lot was was physical cues. You know that's something I always yeah. teach new kids too. It's just like you know, um, you know if you if you feel like you know because everybody gets lost in the sauce sometimes. You know we've all kind of blacked out on commentary once yeah. or twice. Where it's just like, <laughs> you've been talking for three minutes. You've done a full yeah. book report on yeah. the, the pyramids. You're like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, I've been yeah, you. yeah, exactly. So I think using like you know like you know hand gestures. You know, obviously this is all. Depend on 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 who your co-caster is, and that all just comes sure. from chemistry. But again, some of the best advice I got is just like you know, uh, you know, have fun with it. You know, I think I think oh at the gosh, end of the day, yeah. I, like you know, you know, don't don't read too deep into it. You know, we're all out here in the same you know pool swimming, and you know, it should be fun for everybody, including yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, and stay in school. Actually, no, quit your job. Yeah. Drop everything. Yeah. Invest everything in the esports commentary. Please. Uh, and energy drinks. 
That's and it. business cards. Everybody yes. needs a business card. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm working on mine. My what's that, what'll come first? I don't know what'll come first. My updated reel or my business cards yeah. or the or the or the freezing of the sun, whichever you know, whichever comes out on top here. All but, uh, equally likely. Uh, but yeah, so you uh, just got again. You've been uh, busy this summer. Uh, you just got back from yeah. Pokemon Worlds a couple weeks ago, as it is yeah. recording. So mm-hmm. how was your uh, how was your Hawaii experience? I listened to a little bit of uh, uh, you and a Tweet Talks podcast, which was fantastic. Yeah, shout out to those fun. guys. Uh, except yeah. Hazmat, that guy stinks. Okay, I take that back. All right. Hawaii, well, so. yeah, go. T- <laughs> I mean, let's face it. The Smashy maybe get into his head, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, it, cha- it changed him. Really, it did. changed him, and he's allowed to be. But like, it's been a little while now. Come on, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was so fun being on Tweet Dogs. I was over the moon when Charles asked me because, um, like, when you work as a commentator to these events, oftentimes you get like a plus one, like a spectator badge and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, my wife couldn't make it. Hawaii, a very expensive trip uh and she'd already come along to one of the events like this year so i was like i got a free plus one and charles had reached out and i was like yeah come through um so he like came to the event um but yeah i got to do tweet talks after it was so much fun uh but the event itself was a blast like i don't know if, if you know much about pokemon unite or anything like that koopa but it's uh i'm familiar, it was I, I dabble. Event. I'm familiar. <laughs> yeah the metagame was like super fun and interesting uh this is kind of true of almost all esports but especially mobas like regional play styles is always one of the most exciting storylines headed into an event like this because the way japan plays is extremely different from the way that north america and europe plays and latam is very different from either of those two and so on and so forth you can subdivide the region as much as you'd like but um it's super fun to see those clash and this time around japan was the ones that walk away with the win north america's back-to-back world championship streak has ended um and in the moba culture this is you know pretty prophetic of some dark times for north america <laughs> and eu going forward so we're hoping that uh unite can kind of flip the script but this is the story of most mobas it is the old <laughs> one two or so years and then ooh, it starts being a little rough but anyway it was uh the event itself was absolutely so much fun um i got to work a little bit with my pair uh wonder chef who we got to work with all year long um was really fun we got to do a couple games but primarily i was paired uh with danley um, she's a caster based out of APAC, and she was incredible. It was her first time ever working with our team in particularly, and she absolutely crushed it. So it was just like, it was such a joy to work with. I had so much fun, like every single second I was on the mic. And a favorite memory, I think we talked about it a little bit on the Tweet Talk show, but I, um, I pitched this idea to the producers and they let me run with it before our grand finals. We got to like introduce the players like one by one, all esports style with like fire and, shit. and like me and my, <laughs> one of my co-casters, Kellosaurus or Kello, she, um, we like wrote little one liners for each of the players <laughs> and like called it out on the microphone as they walked out and I did my big booming esports voice, which I realized later apparently like, um, like basically deafened her well because she had like me in her ear and like when i was just yelling she was like ah (laughs) so and i oh and i felt so bad when i thought about it after i was like yeah that was a terrible because she's like i can't reach my pack to like turn you down (laughs) like i was like yeah well sorry (laughs) that sucks (laughs) so i felt bad about that but it was like one of the most fun things i've ever got to do um while doing this kind of thing so i was i was particularly very excited for that yeah, let's, I I uh, I was at home. Unfortunately, I was unable to make uh, mm-hmm. worlds this this year. Um, I, as you mentioned, you know Hawaii is expensive. Getting there is uh, getting there is ain't easy. But mm-hmm. um, you know, I was watching a lot from home, and uh, I was uh, watching as much as the United stream as I could. Cool. And whenever I did, I did actually happen to catch you a couple of times, and you guys all crushed it. Um, oh, you thank know, you. I, yeah, I, awesome. I, I love I love being able to watch you guys. Uh, a because I know the outfits are going to be fire. Uh, you, uh, you, we you, had you, some good ones this summer. I'm you, not gonna lie, we kind of they crushed. were really good. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, I think we need to have more regionals in in worlds where Hawaiian shirts are the norm. Yeah, because um, everybody's Honestly. everybody's. I, I love a good Hawaiian shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and shout out to my friend uh, that got me one of the uh, the Munchlax uh, Hawaiian so shirts. So good with it, the pineapple or whatever. Oh, it's a wonderful. Oh my god, there's it's so gas, and mm-hmm. I can't wait to look like every single other man that thought the same idea <laughs> at every at every <laughs> warm weather regional I go to for the rest of the year. We're all Oof, we all have yeah. matching uniforms now. But uh, roll up in the cold weather ones. Put a pair of sunglasses on. Just rock it, you know. Defy the norms. <laughs> 
that's what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, no, you listen, you all, you all crushed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and listen, I, I, I love watching, uh, you know, the ICs and worlds, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's when you know unite shares the stage with the other three games and that's always a lot of fun for me some of the most fun that uh that i had when i went to uh, to nasc this year because i didn't get to enter Mm -hmm. um i was just sitting by the stage and watching everything and Mm -hmm. the night crowds are always so hyped yeah like they they're always they're always super loud throughout the entire weekends and i always like put the bits on my shelf like right in the middle of everything so i get you know i get a little taste of you know people pinging on their phones for for pokemon go and <laughs> people you know it's it's just like oh it's so therapeutic to me and uh yeah. you know, i love it a lot so Mm-hmm. Yeah, these events have truly become like Pokemon conventions, right? Like I, yeah. <laughs> I mentioned before, like I, I played back in the days of like cities and, and nationals, where it was a much, much smaller scale and pretty game specific for most part. But like, I don't know, seeing the international championships and worlds, like worlds this year. It wasn't quite to the scale that Japan was the year prior, but that was almost to its benefit in some ways. I, at least I heard from a lot of just the, the uh, people who were just attending the event, either as competitors or spectators. Unfortunately, like when I was, if you're working the event, like either like staffing, like judging or like or doing commentary or something, like you just don't have the time to do a lot of the cool Pokemon stuff around the venue. Yeah. But like uh, for the people I was talking to that did get the chance to do it, it was like really cool. And you kind of got to do everything. Like you didn't feel like you were missing stuff on your checklist before you left. Where in Japan, there was literally zero chance you could do everything. Like it was, <laughs> it was really overwhelming for a lot of people, especially my friends who were like content creators and are trying to like get film and like vlog everything and they're like i just can't like i yeah. <laughs> i just i am out of hours in the day yeah um, but that was time. cool too but it, it is cool to see that like the progression of the event like um i don't know it's like i think it's only a matter of time until we have like artist alleys at like international championships or worlds, oh, yeah. right like we already have like vendors um like for card games and plushies and stuff like that but like let's get like artists in there and stuff too like i mean <laughs> pokemon approvals and stuff might be tricky but i do think that that would be like a really cool idea oh yeah i love me a good poster and let me tell you mm-hmm. shout out to any competitive game where i get to play a cinderace um you know sure <laughs> that, that is that's what uh you know my favorite things about like watching these events at home uh whenever yeah, i kind of you know- got you it's a little yeah. rough right now um <laughs> you should have played back in year one but yeah okay <laughs> we're, we're, we're did, you. you know funnily enough i did play a lot during year one and i okay. played a lot of cinderace i'm just like <laughs> this guy's sick uh and now yeah. i have his and now i have a, his, his trading card and he stinks cool. too in there so you know it's uh <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe Pokemon Go will save me at some point. I don't at know. At some we'll point, yeah. There I think Okay, this is very Unite specific, but I do think that Cinderace's time will come. To be honest with you, all of the like traditional like, ADCs for MOBA heads out there, or just like physical yeah. attack damage dealers, like or auto attackers in particular, have been having a pretty rough time out there recently. I swear they're just like one patch away, like from being good. <laughs> but it is it's been quite a few patches. <laughs> They haven't quite lived up to it yet, but I I do think that there's some there's some time. The special attacker reign has to end. We need the physical yeah. attackers to come up. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm addicted to mid. So okay, you know, that's, uh, that's fair a, enough. That's, <laughs> that is that that is my my type of jam. So this actually Go transitions ahead. great into the the question that I that I alluded to because I did ask this yeah. question to Jeremy last week, and this is a question that I'm going to start asking all of my commentary uh, constituents. Okay, because I think it's very because I it's like something i uh i didn't think about um so i pinned a question to jeremy about what you know we're all on the road for various parts of the year mm-hmm. for whatever reason and everybody's got a hotel tv show vice you know that okay is, that, that, sure. that, that, that is the crux what we like to watch so I'll, I'll 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 start by asking you that and then i'll piggyback that with what jeremy asked me of what's my in-flight uh favorite thing to watch so, okay you, know, you had a, you had a long flight to hawaii i'm sure so so yeah when you, so when you're so when you know you're unwinding end of the night what what what's what's the first thing you put on the tv and then when you're yeah. in, when you're in when you're in transit you know in in you know thousands of feet above the air what are, what are we watching what are we doing interesting okay i mean the tv show question i feel like in reality is kind of boring like i think it's just youtube right like i'll just like yeah. log on to youtube like <laughs> in the modern day most hotels like you just watch youtube on the tv or whatever so like i'll do something like that which sucks i know so if i think it like of a traditional like 
honestly, my go-to is I'll usually just find whatever like late night movie is playing and mm. I'll throw that one on. Like I'll have something on that's like longer form and you know, whatever. I'll just have it on. Um, oftentimes it's like, <laughs> alien or something <laughs> like great Ooh, um good choice. Uh, I'll play, i don't know that was like the last one i remembered turning <laughs> on on a tv so thank you very much <laughs> um if i'm on an airplane my <laughs> my days have been like this when i've been traveling is i'll just download everything on my phone so i'll download a few youtube videos and then i'll download a bunch of shows on hbo and i'll download uh some stuff on netflix and then i'll download like a ton of manga off like shonen jump and i'm just like whenever i get bored of one thing i can transition to the other like that's the whole like so it's usually like a stand-up special or two on netflix and then like a show recently the show i've been downloading a lot has been like the new harley quinn show from hbo Ooh. um okay. unreal funny I don't know if you've watched it at all. It's so good. Um, so I've been kind of making my way through that. But it's been my flight show. That's a good one. I that's been on my list for a while. Um, I know so we did. did we, we 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 talked about superhero cartoons. So I did. Uh, I ironically enough, the last two things I didn't finish were superhero cartoons. But we'll we'll, mm. we'll dive more into that in a bit. But yeah, listen, that's all incredibly valid. And I think my it's I I love the uh, the answer of just like putting on like you know just a movie that you've probably seen before in the background yeah. in any situation. Like one of my go tos. Uh, that is when I uh, Jeremy asked me this question is that uh, for whatever reason that whenever I'm in a hotel I just want to watch Iron Man 2 oh okay. Iron Man 1 just Iron Man <laughs> 2 is a great hotel room movie all right <laughs> fair enough it's yeah. just on it's just like dumb I love dumb action movies yeah um I, I I'm a big fan of just like uh <laughs> I love bar rescue that's one of like my favorite like yeah. trashy TV shows to watch in like a, in like a hotel when like that's a good one yeah when like nothing else is on uh that's a fun one mm -hmm. um, but I'm in the same way like I'll try to download as much stuff I actually do a lot of my like my video gaming like when I'm in like the yeah. air um you know I'll bring my switch with me and then like I'll say I'll play and then I'll end up taking a nap and sleeping through the, the plane ride anyway yeah. uh so it's just like you know like most things in life I say I'm gonna do it and then oops I got distracted uh -oh. and I fell asleep. So yeah, <laughs> there are those, those business cards again. <laughs> uh, but no, listen, those are uh, those are all very valid answers. And if you're, if you're you. staying in a hotel that doesn't have you know like the ability to sync up YouTube to the the TV yet, you yeah. probably shouldn't be staying there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe so. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough world out there though. Sometimes you gotta just find the sixty dollar yeah. a night hotel. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, we've all been <laughs> we've we've all been there before. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so again, so we, uh, you know, as as the crux of this podcast is, you know, I love to, and I get, uh, I haven't uploaded an episode proper in a while, so I'm using these next few episodes as my guests to just kind of talk about what, uh, you know, what everyone else has been enjoying, what you've been watching, you know, yeah. TV show wise, movie wise. So like, you know, we're just we're entering the the fall now, you know, mm -hmm. every, uh, you know, the the summer of everything is for the most part winding down. So what have been some of your favorite things that you've watched recently, Zoinks? Okay, I'm trying to think of things I've enjoyed recently. Okay, if I'm being honest, and, is and it doesn't have to be pivoting away new. to a... it, can be, it can be old stuff too. Yeah. Oh well, this kind of fulfills both. Um, I so I recently got YouTube Premium, like I like a couple of months ago, and I was like, oh, this is it's now become my favorite subscription to ever exist. <laughs> I, like this is unreal. And one that I've been getting into recently is like an extremely popular thing, uh, but maybe not so much with my generation. But it's a uh, it's Smosh. Have you watched any of their <laughs> stuff? Yeah, I, it's it's been a while. Okay, um, that's ironically enough. Yeah, that is one most of, people, right? Everyone watched like old school Smosh, like back yeah, like, yeah. when YouTube <laughs> started, right? But it's like it has become an entirely different thing. Like now it's like a big ensemble cast. They're like a, just like full of like incredible like LA based like improvisers and comedians now and stuff. And there's like they have a games channel where they do like a lot of like don't win Mario Party or Mario Kart or like or like a ton of board games and stuff. And then they have like uh, a pit channel which is just like a bunch of random content ideas the most popular is like their try not to laugh series where they just <laughs> put water in their mouth and people just come out one by one and do gags or whatever like it's just very short form stuff but it's it's just the easiest and best like popcorn content to have on like their big renaissance where they like really go crazy popular again was when they did the like they were like the first channel to do the like read reddit stories channel 
Like they, oh, they wow. had one guy that like brought that, and then like that trend just <laughs> exploded after that, right? But it was it was huge, and so now they that's one of their biggest content pieces too. But it, I I don't know. That has been what I've been watching a ton of in the in the past like month or so. It's just like every time I sit down, I'm like, I ah, put on a Smosh video and play a game. Like that's usually what I'll end up doing. But in terms of TV and stuff, yeah, there's been a few. Like I already talked about the Harley Quinn show. I've been really enjoying that. Um. But yeah, just kind of dabbling around. Been rewatching a few things. I've been uh, my favorite show of probably my pa- animated, maybe just my favorite TV show. <laughs> maybe I can draw the line there. Yeah. It's hard to decide. <laughs> but my favorite TV show of all time is I think Young Justice. I don't know oh, if you've ever seen it. Okay, I, yeah, I, yeah. It just checks like every Zoinks or box that exists. <laughs> like I, I just adore it. So that is my um, that's my favorite show. And every now and then I'll hit a rewatch, but. Yeah, I remember I got on the Young Justice train like after it got uh, it went through the whole spiel of it being uh, canceled, and then uh-huh. I remember watching it on uh, Netflix around the time they were going to revive it. Yeah, um, and it's something that's been on like my. To, I'm good. I think I watched like whatever that next season was after, and then I just kind of okay. got busy and I haven't gone back to finish everything. But mm-hmm. I love that sort of stuff. You know, I grew up in an era. You know, we're both around the same age, but I grew yeah. up in the era of like the kids WB. Saturday yeah, morning cartoons, all that stuff so like i grew up loving like batman the animated series mm-hmm. uh you know and then all of like the various like batman um you know subsequent shows like True. the batman and batman beyond is like one of my favorites of all time beyond's so, like, a good one very, very um, good one but yeah young justice like definitely scratched that itch for me when i watched it for the first mm-hmm. time um and funnily enough you mentioned smosh uh one of my uh my, one of my very good friends who's been a, a contributor on this podcast in the past uh, a Mr. Camelange. Um, he is. Uh, he's, he's one of my best friends, and one of his uh, is. <laughs> something that happened to him a lot is that he had a very similar look to what like Ian from Smosh looked like for the longest time. So, oh, like, funny. He, okay. So they had like the same style of haircut and facial hair. Got and, it. Um, so for years, everyone always called him Ian from Ian Hecox from from Smosh. <laughs> and he's just like, no, guys, it's not me. I'm actually my name is uh, not that. Uh, and then it, <laughs> it all came full circle for him one year because he went to I forget where he was, but. At the time, he was working at Crunchyroll, and I think he was at, like, Anime Expo or something, and he ran into Ian Hecox in, like, oh, crazy. the lobby of his hotel, and he's like, I'm never going to so get this funny. chance again. I think they took a picture together. Like, awesome. And it was just like, oh, my gosh. It was it was absolutely hysterical. That's so, great. Um, yeah, so shout-outs to, shout to Cam. Whenever you watch this later, yeah. um, <laughs> check, uh, you know, that'll be a lot of fun, but... uh yeah, on the subject of superhero cartoons, because that is also mm-hmm. one of my favorite uh, genres. That's I just recently wrapped up two shows that I really like. Mm-hmm. I just finished uh, Batman: The Caped Crusader on okay. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know that's uh, I, I again I love a good Batman cartoon, and mm-hmm. that's something that got uh, you know it was it, it, I I understand like the creative process with the show was was uh, difficult. It's something I was originally going to be on a Max, but then when the Warner Brothers yeah. uh, uh, and uh discovery buyout happened they they canned it so mm-hmm. amazon picked up the rights to it and you know i i've heard some mixed things from my friends but again like like a good uh you know opinionated person on the internet i wanted to watch it myself so i had uh-huh. a long weekend good, from work <laughs> sat down to watch it and i really enjoyed it um okay I, great i i i, I sort of like this more grounded uh you know no- la noir like mm-hmm. you know, detective story batman stuff um for sure yeah, yeah. it's definitely no batman the animated series that's peak Nothing will ever. Yeah. Nothing will ever compete with that. I mean, um, it was. It's as close to perfect, I think, as you think you, you can kind of get. Right, like there's just yeah. so much going for it that is just peak. I, I mean, the voice performances, the writing, the like. I think it's one of the best like characterizations of Batman we've ever gotten. You know, like he's more nuanced than in most shows. It, it's so. Good. Yeah, no, it, it's it's one of my favorites of all time. And this show definitely scratched the itch. You know, I, cool. I really did I enjoy, like, some of the creative liberties they took with the show. Yeah. Uh, some of the characters, uh, you know, they, uh, they they chose to, to put a spin on here. And it's a lot of fun. I You know, I like Batman when he gets to be a detective and, uh, you know, do for stuff sure. like that. So uh, it's def- I definitely recommend it. You know, if, if you're into that sort of stuff, you're looking for, like, a quick eight-episode binge. I finished it in a weekend. Nice. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. And... I was again. I've been using all this, all these days off that I get from work. I'm just like, okay, I'm actually going to sit down and watch TV because there's so much I have to catch up <laughs> yeah. on. Um, and something I just finished the other day was I finished the second season of My Adventures of Superman. Oh um, yeah, that show is 
it just like has a very special place in my heart. I'm mm-hmm. not the biggest like Superman fan in general. I've always been more a much more of a grounded superhero type of guy. Like cool. I like Spider Man. I like Batman. Ooh. Like you know, interesting. You know, so- we could have a debate on if Superman is grounded or not, but that's fine. Continue. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's that's a that's a good conversation to have. But yeah, they, yeah. You know, but like I, uh, you know, I've always liked the Super Superman animated series as, as mm-hmm. well, and um, I really loved the first season of My Adventures of Superman. Um, yeah, I thought Jack Quaid uh, brings a, a nice levity to this character. And again, I thought the animation style was fantastic. That sort of like, uh, you know, anime Western, like crossover style of animation mm-hmm. was really cool. Uh, I love the creative spin of some of these characters, um, you know, that we got like Livewire and uh, yeah, and Deathstroke. So all that stuff was very interesting to me. Um, and I really liked the first season. And I think I started watching the second season, like back when it, the episode started airing. And I'm just like, I don't feel like waiting every week for these to watch mm-hmm. these. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to wait for the series to finish and I'll just binge it. Fair uh, enough. That's Fair exactly enough. what I did. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I thought the stuff with Kara, uh, was, was very, very interesting. Um, you know, it definitely got off to a little bit of a slower start, but once they kind of mm-hmm. got past the Supergirl stuff and they really started, you know, leaning more into those characters, it was a lot of fun. And cool. you know, I I'm I'm a sucker for for romance. I love I love Lois mm-hmm. and Clark. Uh, they are they are just fantastic, and uh, I will protect them for the rest of my life. Good, um, and I can't wait for season <laughs> three to show. So I, I thought it was re- really really good. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I'm kind of in a similar boat to you. I definitely have watched a couple of episodes, but that is one that has been kind of shelved for a while for me that I haven't dove into yet. But it is like, it's got to be like the most next up on the list of a a lot of content that I got to get through. So I am actually really excited to go watch it now. (laughs) Yeah, I've been like, I go through like these like uh, waves with like superhero related media. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I, I'm a, a slave to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so okay, you know, I, I, I unfortunately can't get off the ride. Uh, mm-hmm. my, they, to the point where my friends, like, I, I'm the butt of all my friends' jokes. You know, I am the consumer. Yes. You know, I, like, yeah. Uh, my, my, you lost but, to the man, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. The, the man, the, the man's got me like this. Um, I think I made a. I was having a conversation with my boss, and that's how I knew it was bad. Where, okay. um, <laughs> I think they just dropped a trailer for the new Agatha series, which is supposed to come out next week mm-hmm. uh, or like two weeks or something like that. I'm excited, and <laughs> I'm also very excited for it. And I remember I watched a trailer, and my boss is like, "Well, what did you think?" I was like, "Gosh." Look pretty good. I think I'll give it a watch. And he was—he looked at me. He's like, "Let's be real. Like that trailer could have sucked wind, and you still would have watched it." <laughs> I was like, "All right, cool. I'm just gonna go to my desk. I'm, you know, I'm gonna take the rest of the day off. Like, I, yeah. I need to recover from this psychic attack you just did to my yeah, uh, devastatingly true. That's um, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, so like, I go through these like dr- these like droves of like superhero stuff, where it's just like you know, if when I'm really in the mood for it, um, you know, I I will I will sit down and and actually like sink my teeth into it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I had to. I think I finished the last season of Invincible on a binge while I was in yeah. surgery recovery, mm-hmm. um, which was awesome. You know, I, I love that yeah. show. That's that's one of the few, like, you know, I don't read as much comics as I used to, mm-hmm. but I loved Invincible so much that I bought the comics and I started reading them. Okay. Um, and they are, <laughs> oh, they're, they're so good. Okay. You like, that's interesting. So I, I have <laughs> like, I've been a comic book fan since I could walk and I read Invincible before it got animated and I was not excited for the show because I don't like the comics. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that's the first person i've heard say that yeah so. i was just like this series is like so up my alley in an insane way and it just like it isn't like you know hooking me as much as i wanted it to but the show has been incredible like they did such a good job the music choice that that show has is phenomenal like just oh, yeah. track for track bangers all the way through that helps the show quite a bit but yeah my favorite genre of all time is um is like teenage superhero like that is my that is my go-to like obviously young justice leans into it old school teen titans like um young avengers comic runs are my favorite oh, comic yeah. runs that have ever come out um so very excited for mcu young avengers um uh, but so much so that like I'm, I'm pretty into like role-playing games and stuff like that and currently i'm playing my favorite one with a few friends in the unite community called masks it's like a teenage superhero role-playing game and it is so much fun so yeah i'm kind of all in on yeah. this genre in particular <laughs> but i'm pretty happy about it so that's the man that i have prescribed to <laughs> yeah yeah there, teenage yeah. superhero 
Yeah, we're stuck on this machine. And mm-hmm. I will say, I think Invincible does translate better on the screen than it does in the comics. I think like, so, too. Yeah. Uh, and because ironically enough, I felt the same way about um, – and I don't think that's like a hot take. A lot of people I talk to in the comics that read comics feel the same way. Mm-hmm. I also feel the same way about The Boys. I think The Boys translates much better on oh, TV yeah. than I think – than the comics uh-huh. are – I because I, 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 you know, I went out of my way to just like read some of the comics. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, this is just completely different. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this is – not the same thing, and I did not really enjoy what I read from the from the comics. So yeah, I will simply just enjoy it. More like a almost like a dark parody kind. Like they're both parodies, right? Like of yeah. a genre, but the the comic books went with like a more gritty, dark like kind of vibe to it. Where the show is, but the show's also like way more cheeky and clever than the comic books ever were, and they're like not afraid to like you know jump at any jokes that will be available to them in the time in the moment where it felt like the comic books were just a little more generic and so they didn't have as much like character as the boys the show does which i think does a pretty good job of that yeah yeah it's very much a product of the time because i know those, those comics sure. came out like in like the early 2000s and stuff like yeah, that so. yeah give him a break <laughs> yeah, it's, but the show is great. I thought uh, yeah. I thought this last season was great. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I I really enjoyed my time uh, watching yeah, I like that. I, I, yeah, I love all these. I love all these characters, and like you know, now that I've caught up, you know, my uh, my Twitter algorithm also like caught up with me. Okay, you know, whenever I start getting into the middle of these things, so it's just like I can unmute all the hashtags. Mm-hmm. I can watch the spoilers. I can look at all. Oh, wait, Huey, the soup's killed the family. Like mm-hmm. type memes. <laughs> like it's just like yes. That's like one of my favorite things to lean into. So that's awesome. Yeah, social media is weird with that. I eh? like my co-caster Wonder Chef and I were talking about this a while back, and it's just like, what happened to the days when we would like wait to spoil things on the internet? You know, <laughs> like we were at least like a mercy week. Yeah. You know, like when something would come out. I do feel like it's kind of Marvel, like the the final stages of Marvel and everything. Yeah. Like when they became such cultural events. It was like everybody was foaming at the mouth to get any clip or anything they could and post that online and stuff. But like now it's like, I, you know, anime or manga spoilers are coming out like a week and a half before. And they're just like, people are just posted them. No reply on the tweet or anything like that. Just first <laughs> post out yeah. there. You're like, Whoa, <laughs> like I yeah. just, it's a bummer. Yeah. And like, it, it, it's not only just that, like people with, you know, not having regard for like, you know, the, the grace period, but like, I I I think what root kind of killed this for me is I think Marvel was did like a hype video about like what back when they were, people were getting back into the theaters again mm-hmm. post pandemic in their like promotional video to get people back into the movies they showed a clip of somebody screen recording Avengers Endgame <laughs> like you know spoiler warnings for a movie that came out four or five years ago at this point <laughs> uh, you know they, they, it's someone screen recording the scene where Cat picks up Mjolnir and the awesome. theater loses their mind which is like awesome but it's like. You're kind of encouraging this bad behavior to the point where, like, you know, when you know Deadpool was was out in the theaters and was a hot thing, you know, Sean Levy and like Ryan Reynolds are like openly like quote tweeting and like retweeting people recording the screens of their movie. And I was like, guys, I understand what you're trying to do, like, sure, you know, but like, yeah, give get people that a break. I get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you you can't do that. Like, and and like, not everybody is a sycophant like me, where I go dark <laughs> on social media for days at a time. I've right. had the same. Marvel hashtags muted for years, you know, <laughs> you to, 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 to. yeah, to curate my algorithm so I don't get spoiled by a thumbnail. I think mm-hmm. I got I got briefly spoiled for Spider Man No Way Home by a YouTube thumbnail. Yeah, I'm just like these people are sick. <laughs> Like, That's a, that was a tough one. I, I truly don't think anyone went into that one not knowing anything. Like I, I think that it was movie the worst was, kept secret in Hollywood. That might be like, the, <laughs> the most spoiled movie to ever exist. I, I really do think so. Like short of a movie like leaking a month prior, but like I don't think so. Like I do think that was the most leaked movie to ever exist. It was literally the worst kept secret in Hollywood. Like yeah. everybody knew what was going on, and like mm-hmm. I wasn't like super upset. I mean, I was a little piffed because like I deleted all of my social media, and I'm just like I thought I'd be safe on YouTube. Sure. Um, I wasn't. <laughs> so uh-huh. I so, you know, I went to the deep precautions, you know, every subsequent Marvel movie after the fact that I gave a shit about what if I got spoiled or not. Mm-hmm. Um and like did it diminish my experience? Not really. Um I <laughs> I vote when I yeah. uh you know, I went to go see the uh, the movie when I was like on the road for the Smash World tour, uh, and I was the only one in my theater to react to seeing Charlie Cox as Daredevil. Okay. Uh, yeah, because that show fucking rules. If you guys don't watch so Daredevil, good. oh my gosh, it's amazing, and I can't wait for them to 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 do it again. 
and yeah. I'm gonna fall in love with this character all over again in a few mm-hmm. months. But yeah, you're like that was that was, that was a tough spoiler cycle. So it's just mm-hmm. one of those things where it's like, all right, these these I'm not gonna let these sickos ruin this for me yeah. uh, again. But you as know, one I'm of the twelve you. She-Hulk enjoyers, I I enjoyed yeah. I enjoyed that show too. I thought it was really fun and like yeah, Charlie Cox cameo was really good and. It, it is a weird spot in Marvel these days where they're, they they kind of rely on cameos to make any of their smaller shows exist, which is a bummer. Yeah. Um, but that one, I don't know. It felt really fun. Like It felt like they were making fun of themselves in a fun way, which is something that, for better or worse, Marvel does a lot. But it, like, it worked in that one, I thought, at, at least yeah. at the start. I did think the ending was like... <laughs> It was maybe one step. At, the whole robot thing was like a weird step for me. But like everything else, like where she like yeah. rewrote it and so forth. That's clever. But like we just take out the robot out of all. Yeah. I'm like down. But anyway, another conversation for another podcast. Yeah, I but, also uh, enjoyed She Hulk. So yeah. I, you know, I I like that show a lot. You know, I mm-hmm. like the, the four. I, I love Tatiana Maslany. I think she's a great actress. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. Oh, I, I, Weirdly, I, I, from orf- the city that I grew up in, like in Saskatchewan. Oh, like, <laughs> well, not this. I grew up in. I grew up near but yeah like <laughs> i thought it was kind of funny shout out to canada yeah, yeah we really love, love love to see it but yeah i, mm-hmm. I like that show a lot i think it was cool seeing daredevil wear like the mustard and ketchup costume uh-huh like, that Very like that good. was fun like i i, I love all, i love breaking the fourth wall it's one of my favorite tropes in like media mm-hmm. uh, and that show like br- like was like the brokiest of broken fourth walls <laughs> so like, <laughs> it was I was, good. like it was funny it was it was a good show um yeah but but i do think i you know i like the direction that marvel is trying to go a little bit now where they're getting more TV people involved in show running their TV, their TV side of things. Yeah, I think I think it's working out. I, it, for example, how did you feel about the Miss Marvel TV show? I thought it was great. I adored it. Like I thought it was so good. It's like it had like cheesy, corny like villains. I guess like as a as a part of it, but that also just kind of feels Miss Marvel-y to me. Yeah. Like as a whole, <laughs> she is like in terms of comics or TV or otherwise. I think she's one of my favorite new characters. Like new. She's like ten years old at this yeah. point in the Marvel in the comics, right? But like, she is one of my favorite like modern generation superheroes to ever exist. I think I think Miss Marvel is fascinating. She runs. She's like the leader of like my favorite comic book team right now, the Champions. Um, yeah. And so like, I am just a huge fan of her. And I think the actress they got for her is incredible. I think she crushed it in that show and in the movie. Um, I thought she kind of carried that movie if i'm being frank I agree. um so she was she was the I, best um, part of that movie oh i can't wait for any more projects that they put her in like i just they need marvel kind of hit this i think recently but it was something that like you remember when the first wonder woman movie came out uh yes. in dc and every the big talking point around because i think it was a pretty positively received movie i enjoyed the first wonder woman and it was like she it's finally a superhero that doesn't hate being a superhero was like the yeah. narrative around it. Right. <laughs> and it feels like we're kind of hitting that like breakpoint in Marvel too. Like I love the new guardians, but like every member of that crew wants to like retire. Right. Like that's like the, the kind of vibe going on there. And the like, same with like so many of the other soups. So like seeing Miss Marvel just be like a super excited kid who wants to be a hero is awesome. Like I like, it's just a very welcome, fresh energy into the MCU. And I'm excited for it. Yeah, I love Miss Marvel. Like, I love Miss Marvel as a character, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for the for the same reasons. I I think she's, you know, one of my favorite of the newer characters as well. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, I love New Jersey representation. I will yeah, shill shout out <laughs> for the state of New Jersey. Okay, not just New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. She's like she's from a Jersey City. So it's like, oh heck yeah, I know exactly mm-hmm. where that is. It's just like it's like when I watch The Sopranos and I'm Leo DiCaprio pointing at the TV. I'm just like, I know where that is. <laughs> yeah, I see. I recognize this parking lot. I've thrown up in a bar at the parking lot. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I know where that is. But like, yeah, hell yeah, uh, yeah. And like, and and I thought that the changes they made was was you know was creative. You know, and yeah, I, I think fine. You know, obviously, like everything's gonna have to feed into the machine at some point. Um, you know, Marvel's how they. Uh, navigate like the rest of the multiverse stuff is like whatever like i'm gonna go watch all these movies regardless like i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> like i'm yeah I, I'm, I'm, yeah it's like you know my boss feels like the, the same way when because uh, he's into the walking dead and he's just like i just can't stop watching it it should have yeah. been a show like six seasons ago but i'm, I'm gonna keep watching it i'm just like <laughs> hey man me too. yeah, yeah i mean just... let's face it like if lost was still going on i'd probably still be watching oh <laughs> i don't think it's stopped. Yeah. you know like it, it's some of those shows that just, just kind of ride it out <laughs> yeah it, it's one of my favorite shows of all time 
Uh, yeah. Shout out to Lost. Another great one to like, I'll just throw on in the background of like a random, on, on a, a, in a hotel yeah. TV of just like mm-hmm. some random city that I'm in for the weekend. So That's not bad. Yeah. I, my go to is usually comedy in that way. Like Parks and Rec will usually be my, my go to. Oh, yeah. Just that's probably like my favorite of that genre, like mockumentary style um, comedy that was so popular when we were <laughs> younger. Like they, <laughs> back in my they, day. they took over, right? So that, that was my favorite, <laughs> I think, of that show. I got onto the Parks and Rec train late. I actually didn't watch it until I got into the pandemic pandemic uh, dang oh, oh really late that's crazy yeah it's you know what because they're like what it's my the best comfort... chris pratt's ever been i agree <laughs> like, he's, it's peak pratt i don't know man <laughs> garfield's pretty good i'm i'm, I'm i've not seen the movie i'm lying i apologize yeah, but that's Sorry. bill murray um <laughs> oh, God. oh brother i thought I, I saw those movies in theaters <laughs> yeah I'm... oh that's awesome yeah. shout out mm-hmm. to my father god bless his soul he took me to see all these shitty movies that i just did not want to see what a uh, champ yeah, I thought I wanted to see Garfield. Turns out I didn't. I just wanted to go to the movies. <laughs> so, no. It's one of those things. I only have positive memories with the first Garfield movie. Like, looking back, it probably wasn't a good movie. But, like, I, yeah. I remember as a kid being like, this is funny. That's yeah. Garfield. <laughs> like, that's Garfield. Yep. I don't know. He, he hates one thing, right? Lasagna. Yeah. yeah. Well, two <laughs> things right. You're right. Sorry, my apologies. Got two yeah. things right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've not seen the the Chris Pratt vehicle of uh, Garfield, and quite frankly, I don't know if I ever will. So we'll, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll cross I'll cross that bridge when I get there at some point. Uh, but yeah, so we we talked a lot about you know television shows. Uh, if you watched any movies recently that you're into, old or new, like what's 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 the Zoinks Letterbox looks like right now? <laughs> oh wow, okay, Letterbox a little yeah. <laughs> I really should start updating those. You know, movies have been, I think my wife and I are, aren't super big movie heads. Like we'd rather just like watch a show or something as usual we go to. But if we're, we did watch Hitman recently, uh, the new Glenn Powell, like rom-com. It's yeah. pretty fun. You know, it was just <laughs> Glenn Powell being Glenn Powell. It was, it seemed like the whole, what we said multiple times while watching was like, this looks like just like a blast to fill. You know, like he just gets to be in a, a different outfit and costume like every single shooting day. Like that would be a blast. So that was um that was kind of our big talking point with that. I, I think the movie was fine. It's a yeah. decent one. But I watched I'm Deadpool here. as well, enjoyed it. Oh. Um been going on a bit of a horror kick a little recently. Like I really enjoyed Long Legs. Thought it was yeah. really, really good. Oh, we so watched good. oh, what was the weird bird one? Um Cuckoo. Uh, oh, the, Cuckoo uh, in theaters as well. Yeah, with Hunter Not Schaefer. as big a fan of Cuckoo. <laughs> Definitely left the theater being like, this one, that one wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> N- not a fan, but Long Legs I actually really enjoyed. Yeah, um, I I actually had to see Long Legs a second time to really like appreciate it. Like when okay. I watched, like I I there was a lot of hype going into Long Legs. Like a lot of my horror for sure. I, like, yeah, horror is one of my favorite genres. Um, so mm-hmm. I was like, a lot of my horror friend buffs was like, dude, like this movie's like it's it's gonna like blow your mind. Yeah, and, like, yeah. When I watched it, I was just like, I I felt okay. Like I was uh, I was whelmed. You know, I wasn't yeah. overwhelmed or underwhelmed. But I was like, yeah, that was. That was good, and like you know, Nicholas Cage is my goat. I'll watch anything he's in, good or bad. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. You know that that that's a selling point for me. And I was just like, yeah, like it was, it was, it was. I wasn't in love with it, and then I had to watch it a second time, and I was like, no, wait, like this movie is actually like 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 mm-hmm. uh, really really good. Like I yeah. love the cinematography; it's fantastic. Just for like sure. that, like it's a very eerie, like suspenseful sort of like the, the pins and needles that made me feel like made me very yeah. uncomfortable, and like that's they like captured- a sort of paranoia better than most uh, horror movies can do i think you know like yeah. without there being um like a lot of screams or anything like just in, in general it was just it really handled like paranoia and anxiety is like a palpable feeling really well which yeah. uh not many horror movies can pull off so credit to yeah. long legs are doing that somebody with a lot of anxiety I definitely oh. feel that one. Yeah. <laughs> shout out, to, shout out to that guy. And that's why Ice Cube is one of my favorite Pokemon because he also has anxiety. Oh, he, yeah. he just masks it with a giant ice cube on his face, and I unfortunately I mean, can't do that. Yeah, yeah, same if possible. Yeah, uh. my goat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I C- Cuckoo was also something that was on my list. I but for reasons like you mentioned, I heard reviews weren't that great, so I kind of uh-huh. like passed on it. I was just like, eh, I'll wait for it to come to TV. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste a movie credit on this one. Um yeah. but I did just got back from yesterday. I saw Alien Romulus um, in theaters. And I oh I loved it. 
Oh okay. my god, it was great. It I've was heard it was so good. I haven't seen it yet. It was great. Like I know the Alien franchise can be a little like a hit or miss sometimes. Oh, um, for sure, <laughs> for <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> like those first two movies are great. Like uh, I like those movies a lot. And then one of my friends, uh, also in preparation to watch Alien Romulus, was watching all the movies because he hadn't seen them. Okay. And then they got the Aliens three, and I'm just like, before I can even get this word out of my mouth, he's like, "Yeah, the movie stinks." I'm just like, "Yeah, it sucks. Mm. It's, it's it's really not that." I I. I I'm not the biggest fan of it, but okay, that's um, fair. But I thought Alien Romulus was fantastic. I wish my theater yeah. wasn't so cold because oh. I was wow, I was freezing yeah. to death, and I spilled my drink on myself, so I was like extra oh, cold. No. Yeah, I was already, <laughs> yeah. Was, listen, I this is where I'm going to get on my soapbox for a second. Listen, Good. theaters, we have reclining seats. Why are you not giving me a bendy straw with my so I don't have to like. You know, like, mm. hunch my cup over to drink my drink. Like, it's not that hard. I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Maybe I should just sit up and drink like a human. But no, I don't want to. I want to be comfy. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm aligned. Yeah. Bendy straws in theaters when. I, I think this is a correct decision. Yeah. Uh, but no, Alien Romulus was great. Uh, I loved the... The cinematography was fantastic. The movie mm-hmm. looked beautiful. Um, yeah. I loved this, the score. The soundtrack was phenomenal. Um mm-hmm. And I thought the the performances uh, were were really really promising yeah. too, and and the, the the xenomorphs look fucking creepy, and that's oh, great. No. Well, that's uh, yeah, oh. that's really good. Uh, a score to ten. Uh, if I had to give it a score out of ten, I'd definitely give it like I definitely give it an eight out of ten. Okay. I, yeah, like, that's, yeah, I, I, that's I, good like, for Alien. Okay, yeah, yeah. we <laughs> take those. <laughs> we definitely take these. I definitely do, the more I think about it, the the way that the movie. It definitely felt like the movie could have ended like 15, 20 minutes sooner. Ah, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, I thought it just got a little long in the end. Um, yeah, for sure. But I still enjoyed my time with it. So cool. You know, I will, uh, I will go back and rewatch all these alien movies at some point, just to refresh my memory. Let me update my, uh, my rankings a bit, but, uh, I, I will wait to watch alien three again. Cause that movie's oh, movies a lot. <laughs> yeah. Tough. <laughs> so fun. I am curious. So favorite movie is a question that gets, gets brought up quite a bit, but, and you know how we all like kind of bring our own, like it's my favorite movie for blank or whatever reasons. Yeah. Do you have a movie in your mind? That maybe it's not necessarily your favorite movie, but in your mind, it's like, it's a perfect movie. Ooh, like a that's... full like 10 out of 10 not necessarily it's your favorite like because i feel like your own biases pull that in but like a favorite and i see because my favorite movie i would ever would probably be like the first spider-verse movie um mm. i think yep. that one is my favorite movie however i think a perfect movie and i like it's just the only one i can really think of when i boil it down is the first jurassic park yeah i think oh, i would consider yeah. that to just be the perfect movie like especially of that genre like i feel like it just captures the action adventure genre better than almost any other film out there like where indiana jones doesn't have a great ensemble cast like they have like an amazing one like it's just i don't know it it fills everything i think so that is uh that's great for me because uh jurassic park is one of my favorite movies of all time how Uh, could it not be it's so yeah like (laughs) like, i love dinosaurs Mm -hmm. those things are are sick Um, yeah yeah like in in terms of uh, movies that I deem perfect. Uh, this is a good, this is actually a topic of conversation I have with my friends a lot. But uh, mm-hmm. one of my uh, my favorite movie of all time for anyone that's does is new here. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is Back to the Future. Okay, um, I love that. And in my opinion, that's a perfect movie. That movie okay. can do that. And that's you know my bias aside. Like that movie is from from front to back. Uh, I think the it, it, it's great stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But another movie that I that I lean onto for this category uh, for this sort of subject matter. Uh, is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, oh, good I th- vouch. I, okay. I think, I Shout think out that Canada. Movie, yeah. <laughs> great, 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 uh, great movie for Canada. I think that movie is perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I remember uh, I missed out on that movie in the theaters when it first came out because I was like young and stupid and was probably too busy doing something else at the time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but during the pandemic, my friends and I had an opportunity to rent out a movie theater, uh, and they allowed us to bring our own stuff to watch. So we watched Scott Pilgrim on awesome. a movie screen together, you know, on the like the tenth year anniversary of the movie coming out in theaters. Cool. And I got to experience, and I got to experience it on the big screen for the first time, and 
it is just a perfect movie. Like the score, so the, the cinematography, like the cast, I the, the casting is, is perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God. insane I, cast. I, like, yeah. Insane. I, I don't, yeah. Like I don't care how many times I, I watch this movie. I will always laugh at the scene where, where Michael Sarah jumps out of the window. Uh, it was like, Oh yeah, you just missed him. I will laugh out loud at that scene in the movie every time. It, it's, it is still, <laughs> it's a good it's, gag. It's it is a great egg. gag. It will never not be funny. <laughs> Bread makes you fat is is always is, is a great gag. Yeah. Like, Chicken Parm's not vegan. Like that's so funny. Like oh, uh, peak Brie Larson. I love Brie Larson. Uh, she is uh, yeah. You know, she 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 crushes it in that movie. So. so good in that movie. Oh yeah, but that that that's my uh, that's my perfect movie. So okay. uh, it's it's a fun one. So dang, I like but, that. Uh, yeah, but uh, listen, that's a. Uh, I think that's that's, that's all we, uh, that I got for today. So, so right. this is awesome. Who would have thought that the commentators being on a podcast for Mick for, for great uh, talking so so yeah, honestly, insane. Glad Who'd it worked thought. out. That never I- happened again. You know, we caught lightning <laughs> in a bottle. I think. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have. Uh, well, yeah, we'll have my people be in contact with your people. Okay, good. Uh, as long as you make cards, I will. I will accept your people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my yes, uh, my people is Brigatito, and yours is very clearly the Pip Club. Uh, yeah. I'm like uh, <laughs> looking very uh, longingly. Are, are, are you okay? Are you being held hostage by Pip Club? Okay. Everybody says that he's just sitting. I don't know how else. How do you want me to pose him like so that he looks good? Get him a bottle of water. <laughs> this is this is crazy. <laughs> he's Pip Up's about to sleep outside. That's all I'm yeah. saying. I don't know. Pip Up's gonna get a job and start paying the rent. That's what yeah. you guys are doing. Yeah, you hear that? <laughs> yeah. You hear that, pal? Uh, Zoinks, thank you so much for joining me today, man. That's a lot of fun. So let the people know where they can find more of you because I think more sure. people should uh, should tap in. Uh, yeah, I hey, I would love that. Um, at Zoinkscast is where you can find me on Twitter. Um, and if you want to see any of the stuff I make or anything like that, almost all of it gets put up on our YouTube channel, uh, Unite Mics that I talked about a little bit earlier in the show. So youtube.com slash Unite Mics. We do a lot of tournament commentary over there, but primarily it's the home for the podcast I host called Overdunk. Um, that it's it focuses in on Unite, but primarily on competitive Pokemon Unite. So, like, tournament results, roster news, topics around that, that kind of thing. And I will make sure to put all that in the description of the video uh, because you all should be checking that stuff out. So, there's only two, there's, there's only three podcasts that exist in the world. Tweet Talks, this yes. one, and Overdunks. That's that it. That is true. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Is, everything, everything, what's, what's NPR? Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Go yeah, back to sleep. There's only going to be two of us soon. That's true. Watch out, Hess. <laughs> 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 Shout out to that guy. I still have your Yankee sweatshirt, by the way. This is my reminder to myself to bring that to you at some point. Okay. Um, but uh Tell yeah, me about guys... Baltimore. What's he doing? You busy? Nah, Probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he he stinks. He's married. <laughs> that's, that's like <laughs> couldn't be me. Uh... <laughs> Definitely can't Shut be up. me. Shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you guys want to check out more of me, you guys can follow me at Koopa NJ across platforms. Like I said, by the time this came, comes out, uh, the Baltimore regionals will have already passed. Uh, and this is my self-reminder to myself again that I'm vlogging at the at the Baltimore regionals. Because mm-hmm. I think people love regional vlogs, and I want people to watch me suffer. Uh, so. <laughs> So or, time, win, or, or win or win <laughs> that's right we're coming from the vault from the, from the strand in the multiverse where everybody gets food poisoning and i win because i'm the last person and the last person there so Koopa. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this <laughs> yeah if i just uh, this is past me uh future me talking to past me don't play lugia yeah. uh, but, uh <laughs> yeah you guys can check out uh me on uh, koopa and jay across platforms uh cooped up pod uh is where we post all of our episodes every week and if you guys are into more pokemon tc G focused stuff. I also have host a Pokemon TCG podcast uh, with my friend George called the Squawk and Seas podcast, uh, <laughs> where uh, each week we talk about all the happenings in the Pokemon TCG. Uh, at the time of this recording, we have not recorded a new episode yet, so don't ask me what the episode's about because I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, Dang that's it. gonna <laughs> darn. But that's <laughs> gonna be all I got for this week, folks. And until next time, everyone's a wonderful evening. We'll see you later.